Hello, my name is Mads Palsvi. I'm the chairman of the Danish political party JFK21. I'm also in the board of World Freedom Alliance. We now have political prisoners in Denmark. I've been asked to make an English version of the two short videos I made at, uh, two days ago when my good friend Christopher Krarup was arrested, charged, charged with arson. What happened was, my friend uh, was at home with his girlfriend at, uh, their, their, in their apartment and all of a sudden four police officers knocked on the door and said that would, they would smash the door if they didn't open. And normally you would need a court order, but with the new law on epidemics, the police can just barge into your home. And they did. They then uh, handcuffed him on the floor, kicked his cat and uh, questioned him for an hour. And he kept saying, what's this all about? What, ha what have I done? Um, he had no idea what was going on. Then during an hour, it last, uh, in, in the end, um, it uh, transpired that he was charged with throwing a Molotov cocktail on a test center, one of these white tents where the Danish government tests people by sticking, poking long sticks up their noses, poking into their brain. And um, he, uh, and, and the reason he, they, 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 they charged him was three reasons. Number one, they came out into, uh, to, to try to find out who had um, set the test center on fire. And they went through um, former employees, and it turned out Christopher had worked there one day, but had was was fired because he refused to wear a mask, a face mask. So he worked there only one day. So it said in his file he refuses to wear a mask, and he's a member of my political party, the People's Party, JFK 21. So if you're a member of my political party and you don't wear a mask, then you are immediately, you are, you are immediately uh, charged with a crime. And uh, something that you could, you could have sorted out with a, with a plain phone call, trying to find out where he was, if he had an alibi, what was going on that day. Uh, but they went out and they arrested him and they took him, him into uh, custody, custody. Luckily for my friend, his, uh, his girlfriend, Agade, who's also a very good, close friend of mine, she called me and I recommended a lawyer. And our, our lawyer, he of course called the police and, and uh, told them to charge him or Im immediately release him. And of course he was released because they had no proof whatsoever that he had set anything at, uh, at fire. And of course he hasn't. He's a political activist. And uh, he, he is fighting, like I am, with the word. And he is fighting in, 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 uh, on demonstrations uh, with all the legal means that we have at our disposal. And they're not becoming uh, more by the day. They're becoming less and less, obviously, because our uh, freedoms of rights are being infringed all the time. So then what happened was we were 10 people that went out to show our support and stood on the parking lot in, the, uh, in front of the police station where we, he was held in custody. The two police officers were out talking to us a couple of times, uh, among others uh, informing us that he was being released. And then after an hour, well, after he just had been released and we were just literally on our way uh, to, to go to our cars and, and go home, they came with um, three uh, large police vans and, um, and um, closed uh, the exit of the parking lot so we could not leave. They then came up and charged us with um, committing the serious crime of being more than five people gathered in pu a public space, uh, which is part of the insanity we have we, and we live under right now. Only. The thing is, they couldn't really charge us because it was clearly a political gathering. And if you are, have a political gathering or you are exchanging points of view and opinions, you are allowed to gather. Nevertheless, even under this 
current dictatorship and the, and the, uh, and the current legislation. Even now, it's in our right. So obviously they can charge us. They will not succeed because the police can charge people for everything. They can charge us for, for anything they want. But it's clearly, it's like a Dupont and Dupont police we have office we have here in Denmark. So this is what happens. We, um, we went home and obviously we're very happy that he was released so soon. Now, other people are not, have not been as fortunate. We have the young mother, the young um, 30-year-old lady who has two children, two-year-old and a five-year-old, who was charged, first held in custody for 60 days. The first week was in an all-male prison because allegedly they didn't have room in the female prison. So she was sent to a, an all-male pr uh, prison for the first week. And then after 60 days, she was, uh, it was um, in court. First, the first time it went to court, the first 24 hours, the court dismissed the case as being pure rubbish. I mean, what's going on? Um, because what happened was she was charged for saying the, the horrible sentence, let's smash the town in a non-violent manner. So this is on a demonstration, a lot of young people, this is the men in black demonstration, people have, uh, you know, uh, torches and um, they listen to music. And uh, it's a good, good crowd, young people. And of course they, they speak in slang and, and it's, you know, she, she didn't do anything wrong I, in my point of view. But, um, and, and, and the court agreed with me in the first instance and dismissed the case and she was, said, she was released. Uh, from custody, but then the police came to, out to her uh, home and arrested her for 60 days, even though she had just been released from the court. And it was then admitted to court, and now they made sure that it, they had a judge in place who, was, uh, who is a collaborator, and he sentenced her for two, to two years in jail for the serious offense of saying this. And, and the, the argument is that, uh, th that they feel that it is likely that she should have understood that there's a possibility that what she said could have been misunderstood so that she was actually encouraging to violence. Even though the only violence there was, was the police going around knocking people on their head with sticks. Okay, so that's it. And then there was, um, there's also the, we have the, um, a soldier, a former soldier, um, who has been once writing on uh, on Facebook that he think that uh, he thinks that the the government should be uh, be shot um, for what they have done to Denmark, and that's of course a, quite an extreme uh, point of view, but uh, nevertheless it is. Um, in my view, uh, freedom of speech, and it's not encouraging anybody to do anything. I think it's about law and order. It's about um, an, a new Nuremberg trial where anything can happen. I mean, clearly, once this debacle ha is over and we've won this World War III, this uh, fight uh, for humanity against good and against uh, between good and evil, once we have won this, of course, there will be a Nuremberg trial. And it can be anything, the result can be anything from a truth and reconciliation process, slap on the wrist, to capital punishment, and anything in between there. And obviously, the, this is a man who is, who is uh, angry with what's going on, for, uh, forced vaccinations, corona pass, and all these things, uh, destruction of the middle class. And he, he believes that, you know, the penalties should be of the of in the most more severe uh, art, and me, me, the soldier in me, uh, of course, agrees that you know you could have a very very tough sentence, uh, whereas the Christian person inside me believes in forgiveness and truth and reconciliation. Luckily, that's not a decision for me to take, neither for Aspion, the soldier. We, we can express our points of view, and they will. They might change during a day, uh, during during a month. It could change. The, luckily, we are not the people who are metering out the sentence. That is up to the uh, to the to the Nuremberg trial we're going to have in Denmark one day. That it will be up to the judges to decide what it should be. And uh, we also have. Um, 
a lady called Vivi from uh, Aarhus, and she has been charged of sharing a photo from a public television channel's homepage of our of a doll pic, um, picturing our, with a picture of our prime minister being burned. So you have a doll with a picture on the face of. Uh, our prime minister and it's being burned and then below it says she should be she should be uh, killed and um, that picture was on the home page of one of our two main television channels in Denmark public service channels and she all she has done is share a picture from that channel and put it on a Facebook group and she's been charged with encouraging murder of our prime minister and she might go to jail for up to 60 year, 16 years. She's a, another young mother with two children. So luckily now, at least that has uh, awoken a few uh, journalists who are now speaking up and they uh, are, are sharing that photo saying now they should also be charged. So there are a few brave people waking up now and I am very pleased to see that. We have a couple of young people um, on, on this uh, event where the police were smashing people's head, literally. I mean, they, they are not allowed to just hit people with their, with their sticks. And if they do, they're supposed to hit them on the arms. But they, by, by, by some sort of a coincidence, they nearly every single time hit them on the top of the head. Huge coincidence, isn't it? And two young people have been charged with, with a serious crime of throwing empty beer cans after the police. Very serious. So far they've been 60 days in jail, in custody, and um, de facto they are being forced to be tested because in jail you cannot, you have one hour, you're allowed to go outside, but only if you're tested. So if you in, insist on, bo on your on bodily integrity my body, my choice, if you decide that the government should not own your body, then the, the punishment is that you do not see sunlight. You are stuck non-stop non, non -stop indoors. So they are being forced to being tested, having the government poke them up their noses into their brains on a regular basis. Literally, right now, just before I decided to make this video, a young man was jailed for walking around a supermarket without a mask. The reason they jailed him was because he was also talking to all the uh, parents with children who are, te they are testing their kids because the kids want to go into the cinema and now they have to be tested. So they are uh, poking the children's brains with uh, quite possibly there are, I don't know what's in these, um, these uh, th there are theories that, that are on these sticks, there are nanoparticles that, were, that are bad for your, your, your body and uh, the little metal, metal, little tiny, tiny metal dust. Uh, but nevertheless, if that's true or not, it certainly is, our, our brain is not, is, it, it, we, our body is not structured in a way that it is normal that you stick and uh, put a stick up the nose into the brain. It's very soft in there and it damages the, this barrier between the brain and the nose. It's horrible. It's horrible that the government will do that to, the, to its own people. And it just shows you that the government should not have so much power and we need to change that right now. And these gentlemen were just asking these parents what, what, they, what they were doing, whether they didn't think about this and their children and so on. So, um, so he has now been uh, charged. Officially it's because he was not wearing a, a face mask. But really, in reality, it's a political uh, uh, reason that he has been jailed, arrested. And now also earlier today, a young Palestinian man who has also been charged with the, this gross or oh, this serious crime of offending the government. He's a young, uh, a young man with Palestinian ancestry um, and it's neither here nor there but it's just to show you that they pick on maybe some of the uh, groups of the people that are the weakest, so that's immigrants. It's, um, it's people who, um, 
who are young, it's people who are single mothers, it's uh, it's people who are yeah, people who who are in jail, for example. So you can you can force test them because who's fighting for someone who's in jail, right? So you start with force testing there, and then you know it it will come to the, if we don't stop it, it will come to everybody, of course. So we have to always fight for the weakest, of course we have. And then you so this young man Vail Vail Mohammed Kavali, he is in jail right now. He was charged and he was not convicted he was freed because um, the judge decided that he should not go to jail for what the prosecutor thought he should go to jail for but then the the the, the very very um, nasty government we have at the moment just like they did not respect uh, the nana free when she was immediately released from custody for saying let's smash the town in a non-violent manner they did not respect that decision and they just came out and 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 um, and put him in custody anyway they did this th with this young man Vael Mohammed Kavali what they did with to him was they now say that he's insane because obviously if you are criticizing the government you must be insane we see a lot of examples of that in the press they're trying to um, make a picture of anybody who is criticizing the government as conspiracy theorist or um, crazy persons and um, and it, it is people who are unstable um, that's what they're trying to do and so this young man he was sent into a psychiatric ward in in uh, in in the in the Hil in Hillerød by yeah that's the town I was born in by incidence it's neither here nor there but this this young man is now in, in in a psychiatric hospital just like the Soviet Union would do to people criticizing the government this is it this we have de facto Bolshevism in Denmark right now the government is 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 deciding over your body it's this it's, it's deciding that if you ch if you criticize the government they put you in a psychiatric ward there they have taken away his telephone taken away his computer they have they have um, deleted his facebook and his girlfriend cannot who called me earlier today she cannot uh, talk to him the uh, lo his lawyer is not allowed to talk to him and the reason i know this is because he, he managed to get access to her phone and he bought her so, uh, way, uh, so he phoned her and he, he informed her. He also informed her that they had forcibly vaccinated him. So we now de facto has, we have now got uh, forced vaccination in Denmark and he is very, very sick. He feels awful and he, he is he's terrified. And he, do, he does not know what to do and his girlfriend does not know what to do. And I don't know what to do other than making this movie, this video. And, um, and hopefully uh, some people will, will help in uh, getting in touch with, with the um, authorities. And uh, hopefully some newspapers will come out and, and fight for his release because we must, we, there must be more people who refuse to live in this dictatorship we are currently living in, in Denmark. We are going to win this one. I hope it will be sooner rather than later. Thank you for watching.